Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. And joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. You can also listen to him on the Best Coast Boys podcast. Landon, how are you doing today, sir? Uh, doing great. You know, got to watch a little bit of... Uh, what some people call football uh, <laughs> in a in a little pre pre season game as as I've been referring to it, and uh, I'm excited to talk about I don't know guys actually tackling each other or at least some kind of close proximity to football. We're getting closer and closer. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and break down the Cowboys' first preseason game against the Steelers. Uh, let's let's start with the most important thing. Uh, I thought the Cowboys were Super Bowl bound before this game, but after the loss to Pittsburgh, I, I just don't know anymore, Landon. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I wore this shirt one last time before I'm ready to burn it because uh, I, I just, after a preseason performance like that, I, I just don't know if I have any hope left, honestly. And that's the end of our conversation about Thanks. the actual outcome of this game. So this time, <laughs> it's time to talk about the players. Let's let's do this uh, winners and losers. Uh, let's be positive. Let, let's talk about the guys that played well and that showed out. Uh, who were your, some of your biggest winners from Thursday night? <clears throat> now nah, I thought I thought a lot of different groups and units uh, played well and showed us some things. Um, yeah, I think the, overall the defense played kind of what we had hoped. They played fast. Uh, they were able to get off the field a couple different times. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes they were forcing incompletion. Sometimes the, the offense was forcing it, but they both count. So uh, <laughs> managing to like get there and get off the field, we 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 like it. Uh, you know, I thought uh, just a couple of people that I had jotted down. Um, Thought Nation Wright had a good game. That's the biggest one him. for me, honestly. Yeah. Let's let's dive into him because he gave up a big catch to Chase Claypool, but there is some questionable contact on that play. But the coverage Definitely. was great, right? Right. Definitely. Other than that one play, I thought he was pretty fantastic for the rest of the game. I agree. You know, I think he showed a different couple of different times he was in phase and coverage. I thought, again, as you mentioned with Claypool, he was in phase the whole time. I mean, it took a push off from Claypool for him to even get close to catching that ball. Uh, and did they? Did he even actually catch that ball? I didn't actually see the, the replay. But um, I, I, I don't think they have replayed Canton, but if they did, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty good. You know, yeah. honestly, I, I'm not going to complain about that, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah, I. but I thought that overall you saw him later – uh, make it a big tackle to, to force a third down. You saw him uh, in coverage uh, a couple different times where he was right there and, and, and forced an incompletion. Uh, I thought, you know, overall the coverage early on was pretty good. You saw mm-hmm. uh, Re- uh, Rudolph having to dump the ball off a lot underneath. So I, I think to me that reads like there wasn't a lot of people downfield. And, and you have to look. I mean, the one thing that Pittsburgh does have for sure on this team is wide receivers, you know, mm-hmm. and, or at least guys that, that they can run out there they and, and play a lot. Like I mean, we didn't see Juju, but we saw a lot of chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, James Washington, I mean, like the, the Deontay Johnson was, was in the whole, 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 whole game. It felt like it was ridiculous. How yeah, he how played the whole he first half just about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, you saw a lot of their top top end guys playing a lot. So it was a lot of good work for our defensive backs. And I thought for the most part that they played pretty well, mm-hmm. um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, I think, uh, you talk about Schultz, McEwen had, had, a, had a, both had really good games. I thought that they showed things. Rico Dowdle played really well. I thought Garrett Gilbert didn't play uh, terribly, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I thought I, Cooper I think, Rush played pretty well. You know, for a third quarterback as well. Yeah, you know, the more I'm watching the Rush, the more I'm concerned. There's just so many times when he's like trying to make a throw on an out route or just trying to push the ball downfield that it, the ball just quacks on him. Yeah, man. It's oh, like, yeah, well. I mean, we know know that, right? Like, he's never going to be a starter, but can he be a quarterback to get you through practice and can be good enough in preseason games to help you evaluate the receivers? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's really all we're looking for here, right? Yeah, and, and I think also, to, more to credit, too, I, I thought Nolan uh, Nolan Brown I mean, uh, and Noah, Noah, Brown, Brown, and, Noah and, Brown. Brown and said C.D. Williams both had really, really good games as uh, uh as well, I mean, uh, I, I just think that Cedric you know, showed a couple of different times where he was able to, you know, kind of stretch mm-hmm. out and make some hand catches, uh, and then Brown had a, had a, had a big ta- uh, catch on a third down and, and several other plays as well, where he just they looked 
you know, like neither one of them was giving up that spot. Yeah. You know, I, I think Malik Turner made a push and, and he he had the fumble, which is unfortunate. But he I think he had like four other catches outside of that, so he looked good. Uh, you know, it's just it, there was a lot of things on on you know the offense that looked good that were mostly. Uh, from like the kind of second team uh, mm-hmm. skill skill set players. Can we talk about Garrett Gilbert? Because I liked a lot of what I saw from Gilbert, but his biggest problem is the same problem that we saw at college that we saw early in his career. Like he needs to speed up his clock, right? Like he yeah. holds the ball way too long. And like the fumble that he had down in the red zone, I know some people want to blame that on bad pass protection, but I actually don't think that was the case at all. Like it was a three-step drop from the three yard line, like you got to re- get rid of that ball quick. You can't hold on to it. And he ended up taking the sack and getting a fumble. And it happened uh, on the believe the next drive. I actually thought the offensive line played pretty decent for him. He just needs to speed everything up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, people are, are quick to blame Nietzsche, uh, Nitschke for that, and I and I think if you look at what I'm sorry, Inseki for that. I don't like he called Nietzsche. That, you're saying uh, the, the high Smith sack, but. Yeah, on the high Smith yeah. sack too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, even on that play, like that was like, it, you know, he, he had gotten through his concept, and I was sitting there going, "Throw it, throw it, throw it." Yeah. You know, it's like he's got to find a way to either play off a uh, script quicker, like recognize that, that that the that the look is not working for him, or that the progression's done, and that he can't get to it, or he's got to get rid of the ball quicker because uh, you, you just can't expect to just sit back there and, and have all day to throw the football, and, and that's clearly what he learned the hard way today. I want to continue to talk about some more of the winners for the Cowboys in this preseason game. But before we do that, I wanted to tell you about Built Bar, the absolute best tasting protein bar out there. It's hard to even explain it. It's real chocolate with amazing flavors. It's just a great combination of low calories, high protein, and low sugar with no crazy additives. Best of all, they taste absolutely fantastic. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you will get 15% off your next box at BuiltBar.com. All right, we've got to talk about Leighton – or excuse me, not Leighton Van Der We'll talk about him as well. But talk about Parsons, him yeah, yeah, Micah Parsons, right? Uh, saw him play two drives, maybe three. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my two. head. Yeah, yeah, play a little bit on the edge, played a little bit downhill. Uh, what did you think about Parsons in his first game since the end of the 2019 season? I mean, he's he's clearly always – seemingly always around the ball. Um, he's so quick and, and physical and – um, and you can just tell he's a, he's a step faster than all, mm-hmm. all the other players at his level. Um, you know, just m- more of the kind of the saying that we saw in training camp, just a guy who's clearly going to have an effect on the, on the offense when he's on the field. Um, you saw him kind of play uh, a little bit of, the, of what, what I've described a little bit as kind of like a Sam linebacker, mm-hmm. like uh, on the, on the line of scrimmage sort of role. That's where he was when he got that fumble. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously was not a, traditional forced fumble situation that he recovered but again like i I mean let's not you know let's not forget to give credit for guys who make the play well here's the here's the thing on that play if you watch it because i I rerounded a couple times like if there wasn't a fumble he's blowing that play up in the backfield like absolutely yeah he was still making the play that's right because he he had already shed his guy before uh whoever it was that had had received the ball and gotten across the formation, he was ready to blow that thing up. So even if it wasn't a fumble recovery, it was a a TFL that he was likely to get. So uh, clearly he looks like a guy that, you know, there wasn't any, you know, I think what you worry about with Parsons and guys at that level is we've seen a lot of him in training camp. Does he get into this preseason game and not play that way? Does he, you know, does he, does he lose that, you know, that step Mm -hmm. once the lights come on? Clearly was not the case with him tonight. He was he was playing the same way he, we see him moving in training camp. Uh, we'll just mention a couple other rookies really quickly. Kelvin Joseph gave up a couple little catches early, but nothing significant. Uh, I think the most important thing is Pittsburgh really didn't complete anything down the field at all. Yeah, and it seems like yeah. that's kind of going to be the thing for the Cowboys. Like they're going to force teams to dink and dunk their way down the field, and they're going to live with those results. Um, Jabril Cox. Uh, he had a couple plays, a couple run stops, a couple ones where he was a little late. Uh, any thoughts on him? It feels like he's waking up, a you know, bit. like because yeah. it, it, it seemed like a little bit at the uh, towards the end of the game, uh, and I and obviously the play level of play, but I, just his own physicality, like you know, he started chasing down guys, making plays mm-hmm. on the outside, using his speed to his advantage, um, you know, doing linebacker things, not just coverage things, right? Yes. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's, that's seen an uptick there. So, you know, he's a guy that maybe is ready to start 
maybe he started to get his feet out underneath him a little bit more and start to like see a, put, uh, a little clearer. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward, hopefully, maybe from a little for a little jump from him next week. Uh, Israel Makamu made a nice yeah. kind of plays in this game. It seems like I again, I don't know if he's going to start. I think he has a chance to make the 53 man roster, but it certainly didn't look like he didn't belong out there. Yeah, uh, I, I liked him a lot. Um, I'm definitely, definitely not going to get out of this podcast without mentioning Sheu Alan Luna uh, and his catch. And, uh, he, de- he definitely, definitely had a nice block in, in the hole as well. Uh, just so he showed that kind of versatility you want. So I'm, I'm still hoping that he's the fourth running back on this team. Uh, you know, as a kind of fullback, special teams, H back guy. Uh, I thought Quentin Bohanna really had a great game. Uh, I, don't, I mean, we're not going to get the all twenty two on this one, but. Um, you know, there were two or three different plays where, and Maurice Canada is another name I need to throw out because he had a really big tackle for loss. He had another play where he would have, I think, had an interception or uh, where he was right there. Mm-hmm. Um, but Quentin Bahanna on that t- t- uh, tackle for loss that that, uh, that Canada had, he absolutely just destroyed his guy and, and pushed him all the way into the backfield. He, there were three or four different times where I noticed him either completely stuffing his side or or making a play in the backfield. Um, and again, I, just because I see them both doing stuff all the time and I saw, and I constantly confuse the two, I think we have to start thinking and talking about Justin Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think just Justin Hamilton showed me a, a, some more stuff. So, um, I, I really liked what I saw from those guys. Uh, I, I, uh, we'll talk about guys who maybe had, you know, kind of a, a rougher night a little bit later, but I thought that, that, you know, those guys specifically that we've listed, uh, all really showed out well, um, and 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 you know have, have, have not improved their stock and, and improved their spot in the depth chart. Then at least uh, really solidified their spots wherever they were. I also will say Osa Adigizua in a in a jersey in a uniform just looks so wide. I mean, I don't know. I was, he's not fat. He just this is what like, I was talking about. He's it's, so it's, wide and long. And it's crazy when you see him standing next to Bohana and and like in Hamilton, he doesn't look any like if you get a forced perspective situation where he's a little bit like closer to you because he's shorter, right? Yeah, yeah, he's like, shorter. Yeah. He looks like he looks the same size. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's 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 so crazy wide. how wide he is. He was actually the guy I was going to mention, and maybe we could kick off that part of the conversation of guys that I thought were kind of. He didn't. I wouldn't call him a you know loser in the winner and loser. Maybe just a little disappointed that he didn't make. But it I, I thought it was he, he was up and down. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like I, I saw him get a pressure. I saw him get a tackle for loss. Like there were positive things there. But I also think he played a ton of snaps. Mm-hmm. I think he was getting exhausted at certain points. He was taking on a lot of double teams and fighting through things. Yes. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and there were times when it felt like it was a lot for him. And, and it's not that I felt like he was had a bad game because I think again. He showed, he flashed, he showed me some things here and there. But I also saw some negative things on his tape, which I think were a result of the fact that they didn't have a ton of defensive tackles. He's a young guy who needs a lot of snaps and maybe got a lot more work than he's had in, you know, four or five, six months since he's played a real football game. All right. So let's talk about some guys that were quote unquote losers that were maybe a a little bit disappointing. Connor Williams at center. Connor Williams specifically at center, though. I thought he played well at, at guard. Fine, I, I, I understand why they're doing it. Maybe just to yeah. have something on game day. But I think it's pretty clear, at least in this game, it was to me that Connor Williams at left guard and Tyler Biotish at center is your best combination. I think that there's no doubt about that, honestly. I think all, all of this, I'm even now more convinced, all of this is about the fact that, and this is after tonight's play, not to bleed back into guys who played well, but uh, Tyler Biotish played really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And then Connor McGovern played really well. And and I think that the, clearly what's going on is that they like McGovern as that fifth, or I'm sorry, that sixth offensive lineman. So They're if just trying any to figure those, out a way to get him on there in his best fit, right? Exactly. And and, and and so like getting him on the field and getting sliding Connor Williams in, it seems like something they would like to try to do just because they like all this. All so this have stuff. they have they tried Connor McGovern at center at all during practice? I haven't seen it. I mean, which is interesting because I know that was the kind of thing coming out of college at Penn State is hey, he could play all three interior line positions. It's fascinating that they're not trying him out more there. I think it's more that they know. Maybe they he's know just a better fit of guard. 
Well, I mean, they, McGov- McGovern needs snaps, like at, at yeah. any position, and, and it's probably difficult to try to cross train him right now when you just want him to be good at one position. That's fine. And yep. you feel like he can get there. Williams is already good at guard. Like you know, yep. he can yep. play guard. So that's probably you know they're just trying to take advantage of all these snaps to try to get these guys better at the positions they're not comfortable with. Uh, let's stick with the offensive line. Um, <laughs> their depth continues to be a problem, but it's not anything different than the rest of the NFL, right? Everybody's depth is bad. Um, Tynishki, or how do you how do you? I always mess up. Seki. Yeah, Seki. Okay. the Seki. Um, is he just is he old and he's past his prime now? I, I'm not ready to just write him off because okay. he lost on a, on him. I mean, well, high is a good pass rusher, well, and, and, and 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 they didn't like watch tape on these guys. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I think and, and I think that's like so something like a spin move that was very well executed. I think you know that's something that. If let's say he was this was going into a game week and they were actually preparing for this, sure, sure. and Seki would have watched tape and say, okay, this guy's got these moves and this moves. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses That's for him, fine. but I'm yep. saying like I'm not also not ready to completely write him off quite yet. Brandon Knight, they just they just need to stop playing him at tackle. I think he, you know, he, yeah, yeah, he's I'm, just like I mean, I think he's okay as your emergency tackle, like if he's your last guy in your game day roster as a guard tackle who can do it. But, you know, I mean, he's, he's not the answer as the swing backup tackle. I agree. Uh, I'll give you another guy that I was a little bit disappointed with semi for Hoku. Um, yeah. Just kind of looks like a guy out there. Like it, it hasn't it, really shown it, up, you know? Well, like, I mean, if I didn't tell you he tested as a great athlete and I told you he wasn't a fifth round pick and he was a UDFA, I think that would make more sense, right? Like there was no, significant gap between him and Malik Turner and Aaron Parker and you know Brandon Smith like they're all about the same right like I mean if the Cowboys cut Sammy Fahoku I'm not going to be upset about it in the total like of training camp and and uh preseason so far like you've seen all these guys make you know one or two big plays some and some platform I just really haven't seen it with Fahoku see I, I and actually Long term, this might be good for Fahoku. I think he is a guy that really needs a year in a practice squad to learn the yeah. NFL, you know, learn the wide receiver position because he has not been playing very much. And I know this is too early to write him off after one preseason oh, game. Absolutely but, not. Yeah. But kind of the way we're, we're trending after two weeks of training camp and now one preseason game is I think he's probably closer to being on the practice squad than the 53 man roster. And, and to be fair to him, like all these other guys that we're talking about, maybe they're not experienced veterans, but Aaron Parker, Malik they Turner, more. yeah, they well, they've been in an NFL weight room, and and they've they've you know what I'm saying, like they've been professional football players for yep. longer. Than for I so we're, let's give him at least the the, the entirety of preseason uh, along the lines of guys who I thought were up and down. Even though I heard somebody saying that they thought he had it was a good game, I thought Luke Gifford or uh, it was just kind yeah. of okay. You know, like, I, you know, he saw him a couple different times, like, missed tackles, overrun plays, like, stuff that he just can't do. If I feel like play. he's the same guy that we saw. Actually, maybe less than what we saw two years ago from him. You know what I mean? I, I mean, he certainly isn't seemingly gotten a, a ton better. No, you it know seems like I'm he's saying? plateaued, right? Yeah. Um, and I also thought another guy, I mean, again, not so much in the loser category, but more in the he was he had some good and he had some bad, uh, Reggie Robinson. You know, I thought he had the forced fumble. He had a big tackle on on third down, I think it was, to make a stop. Mm-hmm. But I also saw him got burned a couple times and and, and, and kind of get some separation. So uh, I, 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 it's good to see him start to make flashes lately. At least we're hearing his name called more and more. And maybe he's another guy who, uh, like Cox, is just kind of – it's just now kind of c- catching on. I mean, again – this is so early, guys. Like, this is not even technically the first week of. This is the fir- just the first week of regular preseason. So yeah, I, I just like to combine this with what we're hearing and seeing in practice, right? Like, it sounds like yeah. Reggie Robinson's been really up and down in practice. He was up and down in the game. Again, I, I, I'm going to say this about a bunch of guys, but he's one of these guys that I really think could benefit from an entire year on the practice squad, just learning the position and practicing two, three times a week. This, Absolutely, you know what I mean? Because he's not ready to play now, and if he has to be forced out on the field, it's not going to be good for anybody. But a year from now, could he potentially, you know, maybe take Maurice Kennedy's job, who's on a one-year deal, or uh, Anthony Brown, who's maybe they decide to move on from after this year? Maybe I, I just he's not ready to play right now. Yeah, absolutely. 
I, I think the only other guy that I, I wanted to mention, I, don't, I think I really briefly mentioned uh, Rico Dowdle. I thought, you know, he really mm. showed us some good stuff tonight. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it's 100 percent. I mean, I didn't think he was I thought he was a, a, almost a lock to make the team basically before we came here just He's because so, of yeah. a little bit what we did last year. I think he definitely is now. I mean, he just showed you kind of that ability to be sort of a, a complete back and, and do a little bit of everything well. Uh, I, I just think that he, he's 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 an exciting young player. I, I, I'm excited about the Cowboys running back room this year. Um, we are 20 minutes into the show, and we did not mention Ben DiNucci. Um, <laughs> ben <thoughts>? DiNucci. <laughs> ben DiNucci. Yeah, I mean – I think I still think he's your practice squad quarterback, you know, I mean, just because I think he has some traits that, uh, you know, he has a big arm. I do think he can throw from a couple different angles, as they mentioned tonight, and they showed tonight he threw that sidearm pass. Um, you know, there's, there's some talent, there's some raw talent there that's worth developing. And I think he, he would be a good practice squad quarterback simply because of the fact that he can help you simulate a lot of different kind of quarterbacks, yeah. you know, during the week. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm definitely not trying to keep him on the roster. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a rough watch him the next three games. Uh, before we go, um, <laughs> there was some talk pregame from Jake Glazer about Dak Prescott and his injury. Uh, they said it's more of a baseball injury, it's like right underneath the armpit. Troy Aikman commented during the game that, you know, whenever a quarterback is missing this much time, maybe it's more serious than the Cowboys are letting on. Do any of the comments from Glazer or Aikman have you concerned? No. I think this is, you know, uh, uh, a an attempt to kind of counteract the fact that Dak was not on the sideline that they could, you know, uh, uh, show shots on. And, and just they're just trying well, to drive up did, interest, I think. Did honestly. you watch the I mean, halftime interview with Dak? Uh, I, I caught some of it, but I wasn't paying. I wasn't watching. So they, I mean, they tried to get him to say stuff about his shoulder. And basically, Dak just said, we're just trying to be smart. We've got five weeks until the week one. We're just being cautious here. I mean, yeah. Look, the just the fact that they didn't even bring up the schedule. I mean, they're just trying to drive interest. You know, okay. just create create intrigue. It's okay. it, like, look, if you look at the schedule of, of of the training camp practices and the way they work line up, it makes sense that if he has an uh, uh, an injury where he has soreness from overworking something, that they would just not put him into practices that if he's getting if he's they would not put him in practices to get prepared for a game that he's not going to play in yeah so, you know? so let me so, ask you this at what point do you start to get concerned like if he misses all of this week of practice are you concerned uh ish but not pro still really no not really i mean i i need to, i definitely would like to see him i mean he definitely ha is and has to play preseason games like that's I I 100 would be nervous about him not if he didn't play preseason like, games. So if we get to the third preseason game and he hasn't taken a snap yet, that's so when you get a little concerned. I'm concerned yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, honestly, I think it's I think this re, this level of of concern about what's going on is reasonable if uh, he doesn't practice or, or throw the football, you know, in the next week i would say okay. so basically when the cowboys are practicing with the rams like if he doesn't do anything during those practices then it's time to get concerned i see i don't even know that because I, I i you know what i'm saying like because it's a practice versus the rams i could see them wanting to be careful there and not necessarily putting him in to do a bunch of stuff so mm -hmm. I, I i don't okay if we don't see him throwing it all in the next week then i would be concerned for sure okay but but i think right now it's like you know look we're still on we're st we're still basically talking about getting ready for the normal first week of preseason, right? Which he wouldn't be playing in anyway. So, right. uh, after a week after that, like once we start getting into the nitty gritty, the two weeks that he needs to lead up to his dress rehearsal, if he's not throwing the football by then, it's time to start having this conversation. We've got three more preseason games left, Lane, and we will be here breaking them all down after the game. So make sure you continue to download the podcast and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, continue to check us out on YouTube as these shows will always be posted pretty quickly after the game is over. Uh, you can follow Landon at McCoolBCB. You can follow our account at Locked on Cowboys. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We will see you next time.